Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we have Kevin with us and he got selected into the 2025 summer internship program at Google and that too off campus. So welcome Kevin and great, it is a great job and uh, lots of congratulations to you on achieving this. So can you start by giving an intro about yourself? Yeah, sure ma'am. Hello everyone. As ma'am has already said that I will be joining Google in 2025. As SW intern. I'm studying in Hyderabad in my third year as in information technology. I'm also a computer vision intern at NVIDIA for the last six months. And I am mostly into the AIML domain, creating projects all the time. And I constantly practice lead code and code forces contests, trying to get my rating up. Okay, great. So uh, in this video, um, Kevin will be walking us through his interview experience that he had while applying through this free internship at Google. And then he'll be talking about how tips on making resume more noticeable by the recruiters. And also then he'll give you some tips and suggestions that can be helpful to you all for your coming interviews. Right, so let's get started. So Kevin, uh, can you start by you know telling the how the interview process was at Google and how were your rounds and everything? How did did it go for you? Yeah, sure, ma'am. Uh, it all started in June fifteenth when I applied in Google's portal with, with three referrals. Because right now I would advise anyone applying to apply with a referral because almost all applicants are having a referral. So without a referral, it's basically a losing game, and if you are applying, apply with a resume which has a good template, a proper font, proper structure, which had, and if you have an experience, it's an added bonus. And I got my reply on June 19th, and my call was scheduled on June 20th. It the, there was three rounds. The first round was a telephonic round. The telephonic round was pretty simple. It was just to talk about how what kind of person you are, what kind of projects you made, where you're studying, and how many lead code questions you did. So they were just get, trying to get a feel of, you know, how many questions you did, if you are actually qualified enough for this interview. And it was pretty simple. It's not a direct elementary round, but I know people who have gotten eliminated in that round also. But it's not much to be worried about if you're confident in your skills. Then there is two other rounds. The two rounds are technical. The first one is more simpler than the other one, but it wouldn't. It's not that easy. In my first interview, it, it was a 45 minutes interview round, in which I got one question on binary search, and I would suggest, I would make it, uh, I would rate it something like a lead code medium. It's not that difficult to come up with solution, but yeah, it's all about your talking process. You have to be clear to the interviewer about your logic. To have good naming conventions, you have to have proper uh, proper intention, and you should always make sure that the interviewer is following you what, what you're saying. In my interviews, always I made sure to ask the interviewer if you're following, if they have any doubts, or should I explain this point again? Have test cases which you can dry run. Right when the right when you understand a solution, you can explain that solution with the test case and ex and ask the interviewer, is this how it's supposed to go? And when they give the green light, I just went and coded up the solution. And there was a huge emphasis on the getting the time and space complexity also right. And overall, it was a pretty fun experience. It was not, not much of a interview interview style. It was not your regular interview. It was more of a journey with the interviewer in which you both were trying to solve the solution. Even the second interview was a 45 minutes. And in this too, the interviewer was not very in normal interviews, the interviewer is actually trying to get you to pass. So you have to take that as a positive and always think of the interviewer as a friend, not as someone who's trying to fail you. So in the interview, the interviewer was very helpful. It was like we both were trying to solve the problem together. It was a graph and DP solution question. And it was not very hard. And I solved the question in 25 minutes. And then I got a follow-up question which also I saw in the rest of the time. And at the end, I just asked a few questions about Google. And it was overall good experience. The interview went very good. Great. 
So uh, just to make a point here, so when we talk about these interviews, uh, apart from your technical skills, what also matters is how you are able to convey your thoughts to the interviewer and how well are you able to pitch your logic. That's the whole uh, time that you get, uh, the interviewer gets to judge you on, right? So you should yeah. be confident enough while you are saying something and make sure that you make it as a very friendly conversation that is going to help you a lot. So, uh, as you know, in Google, like almost every computer science student thinks of Google as the dream job and like all of them would want to apply to Google. So there's a lot of competition for sure. So uh, any suggestions and tips from you to make sure that your resume is getting, uh, you know, noticed by the recruiters because they receive a huge volume of applications and the distinguishing factor like the most distinguishing factor is the resume right so uh your take on that yeah it's like, like a job at google it's not easy but it's definitely not impossible i would say that the i recently checked that the acceptance rate in google internship is less than four percent but it's not something to be afraid of but i would suggest to take it as a challenge you need to focus not just on dsa to crack the interview but you also will be needing dev the way I think it is that dev is needed to reach to the interview. And a job at FANG will definitely require DSA to crack the interview. So you have to have both skills at a good level to get a job at Google. And it doesn't depend on your college also. Definitely being from a tier one college, it has its perks that Google visits you on campus and you don't need much DSA. You just need a CGPA to get, sit in the interview. But if you're applying off campus from a tier two, tier three college, you need dev. Dev is very important in the terms that to get you to the interview. It needs to it'll prove your point of being a good software engineer. And how will you prove this? You'll prove this through good projects. Projects which are not something like a Netflix loan, which people wouldn't pay much for, but it has a good market value. It's solving an actual problem which people are facing. That's what a good project is. So having projects like these can definitely up your chance. And your resume, you should always use a good resume font or a good template, which has a proper structure to it. And your resume should always include a lot of numbers. Like, for example, I'm making an AML model. The, the description of the project should have the number of images I use to train the model, the numbers of accuracy of the model, how it is performing in real time. It should have good description. And the description shouldn't be lengthy. It should be lengthy enough to explain your point with, and each point should have good value to it. A prop, a way I explain my projects are in one line, you can explain a lot, which is like, for example, you boosted your model accuracy by 8%. You can die this down. You can die a lot of information down in this one sentence by just saying that boosted model accuracy by how much by 8%. How did you measure this by mean average precision? And uh, how did you achieve this? That'll be follow up. So in this one sentence, you can convey a lot of information. So it's just about being precise, having a precise resume, conveying a lot of proper information in a structured way. Right, good point. So uh, I'll also add to that. So when we are making a resume, whether it be your, uh, like let's say work experience section or your project section, we should try to at least uh, make the things in that look such that that you have worked on solving a problem instead of creating a copy of what already exists. So it should come out like this, that you have worked on uh, thinking of a solution to a problem that actually exists. So it should be delivered to the person who is viewing the resume like that. So that puts more emphasis. So good point on that. So since you cleared uh, the internship uh, rounds very well and that too off campus, so you know, there are many students, as you said, uh, their colleges don't have Google visiting them. So many applications are mostly through off campus only. So what tips would you like to give to such people who are also, you know, trying to uh, like at least get a chance to appear for the interviews and move on their uh, like profile to get selected and clear the interviews. So in general, what tips would you give in terms of uh, DSA preparation? and uh, you know like throughout the journey uh yeah 
getting a job at Google is obviously everyone's dream. It was mine too. So it doesn't take much. It just needs consistency. Uh, so studying something like DSA definitely will need consistency. Having a proper, well-managed, structured uh, roadmap for development and DSA is very important. For me to learn DSA, I use Strivers SD sheet, Need Codes IOS roadmap. I've completed those roadmaps at least twice, and I made sure to provide adequate time for both. Like uh, I had this five is to two ratio for my DSA and development. The days which I, the weeks which I needed to focus more on DSA, I used to give five days in the week to DSA and two days for dev. And equally, when uh, my company needs a project done quickly. And I have to put a lot of time in it. I used to give five days for dev and two days for DSA. So just doing what you like is the most important thing. And having good projects on that specific domain is what will get you the job. So I would suggest that don't focus on the market. Let the market focus on you. by Because there will always be someone willing to take a shot on you. So just be confident and patient for your chance. Okay, so now a very important question. So throughout this process, it's a I agree it's a very hard journey for a student to go through it. Like you have to face a lot of rejections, a lot of tensions and stress and all. So your suggestions to uh, help students stay motivated and don't get disheartened by whatever rejections they have, or even if they are not able to get their first job as uh, in one of the companies in Pang. So any suggestions on that? Yeah, uh, I know it's hard. Even I have also applied for more than 500 companies. So it's it takes time. It takes consistency. You have to keep focusing on your skills and believing that you are company ready. And by not take, and taking good, like if you are rejected for a role, you can ask the interviewer on tips on making yourself better, on what you lagged. You can keep asking tips to keep applying to roles and it takes time but you have to be patient it doesn't matter if your first job is the it's a fang company or if it's a normal startup it just the first for the first job you get is very important because uh, just getting yourself out there being having some experience is better than having no experience so i i don't think you should be very picky in your first job because that first job might actually be your path to a bigger company Right, that's a great point. Actually, so from your first job, you get to learn a lot and, you know, you can switch any day, try to switch any day to these big companies like this. So, yeah, don't get disheartened, stay motivated. That's the main point. So, yeah. any final closing remarks that you would like to share with our audience? Closing remarks, I would suggest that uh, we are working in this field for 30 years. So, even after four years, you still don't have a job it's not it's not as big of a deal it, you don't have to listen to your neighbors on how they are doing listen to your classmates that they got in fact comparison is the thief of joy so just being content with how much you did and keeping on working hard and it's not that you don't compare yourself and also not do anything that that's not what i'm trying to say i'm trying to say keep, keep focusing on your grass and don't compare with other people and just wait for your time. Yes, great point. Every individual is unique. So we should be happy about that. So thank you so much for sparing out your time. And being a fellow Googler, I would like to welcome you to Google and wishing you all the best for your internship tenure. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, everyone.